Mess with the pros, hairball. <laughs> hey, chill, free bag, or I'll stun gun your butt. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Jay the Sting right here again on another Wicked Wednesday here on the House of Horror. And today I'm going to be reviewing Man's Best Friend. This is, of course, a movie with Lance Hendrickson. And starting today, Lance Hendrickson is going to be running wild on the House of Horror. Um, the Insanity starts today. And I'm going to be reviewing... Uh, horror film starring Lance Hendrickson just because I'm a big fan of his and uh, you know kind of give me a chance to go back and watch some of his films I just want to kind of do a little theme here you know no real reason for it just you know something for me to kind of look forward to every week just trying to you know kind of keep things fresh over here kind of get a little stale and stagnant so I want to kind of mix things up a little bit but yeah Man's Best Friend came out in 1993 and um actually picked up this DVD for three dollars at Big Lots and uh, for three dollars it's a uh, you know great 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 value but um, I got this like a year ago so um, but one of my favorites from that that period of time came out in 1993 as I already said uh, I did get a chance to watch this one in the theater my, my brother was uh, was kind enough to kind of sneak me in you know we had to do that quite a bit back in the day the Rules weren't quite as strict as they are now. I think you actually have to have a an ID stating your your uh, your age to get into a do an R-rated movie now. Um, but you know, back then we just kind of said he was my guardian or whatever. If anybody asks any questions, so thanks, bro, for for letting me uh, you know watch a lot of shit I probably wasn't supposed to see. But I actually got Lance. I met Lance uh, a year ago uh, last. Um, last May in uh, Texas Frightmare Weekend and I, I got him to sign a, a one sheet for a man's best friend. I'm going to have to put it up in here sometime soon. I'm running out of poster frames, but yeah, definitely doing that sometime soon and I'll show that off, but um, yeah, anyway, this, uh, let me get on the actual movie and stop uh, bullshitting. The uh, cast is, uh, of course, Lance Hendrickson, he plays his, uh, you know, token you know, evil character in this one, and he plays Doctor Jarrett, who is like an evil scientist guy. And also, the uh, the main lead is is Ali Sheedy, the lovely Ali Sheedy, and she plays Lori Tanner. And uh, she has like a really short haircut in this, and I just really wasn't wasn't digging the hair. But other than that, she's she's great as always. I just don't really think she has the face to pull off that. It's like extremely short hair, and um, it's like almost as short as mine, but. Uh, yeah, other than that, she did a great job. But uh, of course, the main star of this movie is Max. Tibetan Mastiff um, is the kind of dog he is. I actually went and looked that up because, I mean, for, for so many years, I, I thought it was just a Rottweiler, like a type of a Rottweiler, because his stature is, is similar to a Rottweiler, but I went and looked on Google and, and I looked at a lot of pictures of these dogs, and they, they tend to have uh, fairly long hair, you know, because I think it's really cold in Tibet, so, uh, but, uh, but really interesting types of dogs. It's like a a really old species and uh, it's uh, called a primitive this considered a primitive breed because it, it like even when it's you know domesticated it shows a lot of uh, similarities to wild uh, wild uh, you know canines like like wolves and stuff um, but yeah really interesting stuff on the the, the type of dog but uh, he is a Tibetan Mastiff if you were interested um, but yeah, really interesting stuff there. But, 
the plot of the film is this is a uh, okay. Uh, Ali Sheedy's character, she's an investigative journalist, and she is uh, doing a story on this lab who apparently does lots of tests on uh, tests on animals. You know, this was a big topic there in the early '90s. You know, a big deal with uh, you know testing animals on makeup and stuff like that. So they didn't really know what was going on, but they knew animal testing was going on. So her and her cameraman, they, they go over there to this lab and they kind of sneak in and they're, you know, snooping around and looking at the animals. You get to see a lot of gory images of, uh, I think it's like a, a chimpanzee in there with a, he's got like a clear, instead of having a, uh, the top part of his skull is, the top part of his skull is gone and it's replaced with like a clear, um, like a clear piece of plastic so you can see his brain and all this uh, gory stuff and. And just, you know, just lots of terrible things they've done to these animals. You know, I'm not a big, like, you know, animal rights activist or anything, but, you know, that, that kind of shit's not called for. But, um, yeah, they do eventually find uh, Max. That's the dog, you know. They're like, okay, just a regular old dog in here. And uh, they get Max out, and one thing leads to another, and um, Lori's character, she... Uh, takes the dog home and her boyfriend's not very happy with that and you know lots of comic relief there with the boyfriend not liking the dog but uh, eventually she decides to keep Max and from that point on it's uh, Lance Henderson's character trying to find his his dog Max it's like his big experiment it's uh, what they've done is they've combined lots of other types of animals DNA uh, with with the dog DNA so it looks like a dog but it's got the DNA of all these other different animals in there which allows him to do all kinds of cool things like he has these huge claws I think like a, a bear and uh, he he eats this cat and I'll uh, stick this scene in here somewhere but he uh, he eats this cat and it's uh, he swallows it like a snake like it, like his jaws uh, separate and he swallows the cat whole and there's one scene where he uh, is like a chameleon like he has chameleon skin and you know he's uh, camouflaged or whatever so um, yeah but anyway Dr. Jarrett wants Max back and um, you know as you can imagine everything plays out and at the end there's a big battle and uh, you know you'll find out what happens but um, yeah this is a great film I think it's really uh, carried by the, the special effects and the makeup in the film and they're done by uh, Kevin Yeager and uh he, he built the puppets and he did the, the special makeup effects. Uh, a lot of the stuff was done with puppets, but you may recognize his name. He's done all kinds of awesome movies. He did Friday the 13th Part 4, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, uh, The Hidden, 976 Evil, and uh, he's still doing stuff to this day. He's done all kinds of you know awesome horror movies, but still doing a lot of television work uh, today. You know, A lot of people doing CGI, so he probably doesn't work quite as much as he used to back in the 80s but in the 80s and 90s but um yeah i know you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about 90s horror films but you know i feel like they get a bad shake and uh you know, a lot of people forget about some of these films that are you know they're going to be classics and in, in my opinion i know this this film's not you know one of the best films ever made but it's a it's an entertaining film to watch and check out and um it's always something I can throw on on a Sunday afternoon, you know, and, and get some entertainment value out of it. You know, not a lot of brain power required to, to process the film. And I loved the hell out of it when I was a 12-year-old kid, uh, when, when I saw it the first time. I know my brother was probably like, you know, God, you know, you're such an idiot for liking this movie so much. But um, I really dug it. And, uh, you know, that's probably why I like the film so much. I, I got a lot of uh, nostalgic, you know, value that I, that I hold on to. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of weird. I, I, uh, a lot of memories I have about a movie are based around, you know, what I was doing, who I was with, stuff like that. So that's probably one of the reasons why I, uh, you know, hold this film up so highly. But it is one of my favorites, especially from the 90s period. And uh, it still kind of has that, that uh, the 80s feel to it, uh, you know, even though it is in the 90s. But, um... Yeah, I know at the beginning of the film they have uh, they, they show all the animals in the uh, the, the lab, and uh, another story about my brother. He actually worked in a 
a lab where they did similar things like this. They did all kinds of uh, testing for, uh, you know, they're trying to find a new medicine. You know, they want to test the side effects and everything. And they also, his, what he uh, worked with was, uh, they were called rhesus monkeys. And they're, it's apparently like a really common, uh, really common animal to use in these types of tests. But th what they look like is, they look like a, uh, a, a small version of an orangutan. Um, no, no, baboon, I'm sorry, a small version of a baboon. They've got the huge teeth, you know, just like a baboon, and they're really ferocious looking, but, um, and they used to shoot those things up with ketamine and cocaine and do all these tests on them and stuff, and uh, I was always really interested in it. And uh, it's, you know, really a lot of terrible things they do, but it does serve a purpose, you know, but you got to draw the line somewhere, but... I don't. I think that whole program has been shut down now. It was at one of the local universities around here, but um, yeah, I wanted to go work there. I, I wanted to be a vet, a veterinarian, uh, back when I was, you know, just getting out of uh, high school and everything. And I tried to go up there and get a job, you know, trying to get some experience under my belt. Those assholes wouldn't hire me, so I was gonna like clean the shit out of the cages and stuff, but they wouldn't even hire me to do that. So wasn't qualified to clean up the shit, apparently. So uh, yeah, that that sucks, but. Anyway, back to this film. Um, highly recommended, you know, for a, for a rental. Or a, this film's actually on YouTube as well. I'll post a link up uh, right around this general area right here, so you guys can go check it out. You won't have to buy it. You can go watch it on YouTube and all that good stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another Lance Hendrickson classic. Peace.